Hi, welcome to the Fit and Healthy Today show. Today our subject matter will be acne. Uh, most very common problem between our uh, ages between 12 and 40s, particularly for adolescents and premenopausal women. 80% of people between those ages suffer from some form of mild, moderate, or heavy acne. So heavy subject matter here. I'm going to try and get through as much information as I possibly can in the time that I have. First of all, acne, hmm, we have these little glands under our skin that produce something called sebum or sebum. And what it is is it keeps the skin moist. It's an oil gland. What happens is, is certain things can cause an increase in production of the sebum and cause little areas to get clogged under the pores, bacteria, and form either blackheads, which is a mixture with, the, with something called keratin under the skin and various skin pigments, or actually get inflamed and become slightly infected. So we're going to give you some suggestions today. We're going to define it, give you some suggestions as far as diet is concerned, and then the supplementation you can do to help alleviate the symptoms of acne. First of all, hormonal fluctuations or imbalance are probably one of the biggest causes of premenopausal and adolescent acne, which primarily arises from androgens, the conversion of uh, testosterone into dehydrotestosterone, and then estrogens are somewhat antagonistic, particularly environmental estrogens. In a nutshell, uh, hormones are fluctuating all over the place, and it causes acne and the sebum to overproduce. Poor diet, poor digestion, uh, you don't diet break down fats, you have the wrong kinds of foods, you take in toxic chemicals, over 3,000 different toxic chemicals in the U.S. added to food, um, will cause your liver to become toxic. Your cellular, on a cellular level, you become toxic, you're not digesting your foods, the liver becomes imbalanced, you just cannot properly regulate your hormones or stabilize the hormones. Emotional distress, increases in cortisol cause hormones to become disrupted. Uh, and, and cortisol releasing causes kind of like a battery acid on the vascular system, so it decreases circulation. Um, nutritional defici deficiencies. In order to maintain healthy skin, healthy bacterial levels in the skin, and the proper sebum content in the skin, uh, certain nutrients are required to maintain health in that regard. Uh, food sensitivities uh, or chemical exposures. So if you get chemicals or you have certain types of allergies, allergies make you inflamed and hypersensitive and so it'll make the skin inflamed and hypersensitive to everything and therefore you'll get that acne breakout. Um, chemical exposure, particularly with those 3,000 chemicals that I mentioned, along with all the pesticide chemicals, all the other clinging chemicals that we're exposed to, Hi, your body has to detox all of these. I heard an estimation that my great-grandparents were exposed in a lifetime to chemicals of what were exposed to in one day. Just a lot more chemicals than the old days, 100 years ago. Genetics uh, can affect it, a propensity towards having more skin issues or having thinner skin or how your sebum reg regulates itself or how good your liver. Genetically, uh, certain people, families who have problems with acne, their kids will have more problems, but we can reduce it with some of the other suggestions I'm going to give. Candida. The sugar feeds that candida, and with such high amounts of sugar holics, people who consume a lot of sugar, processed foods, it feeds something called candida or otherwise, aka known as yeast. And that yeast just goes crazy. It causes you to become inflamed, hypersensitive, and actually, literally, they have done testings on the skin as far as the glucose is concerned when people have diabetes or high sugar content and literally how the skin and the cells process sugar comes out definitely through the skin. Um, we're going to address diet first of all and the things that you can do dietary um, to help and then the things that you can avoid that hinder the process or, or contribute to acne. Diets and good old Jack Elaine 40 years ago said Diets of unprocessed foods, good old wholesome shopping the perimeter of the grocery store, a lot of fruits and vegetables, good sources of quality protein. Now mind you, hormone-free protein because guess what? Most of the meats we find standardly in grocery stores are full of growth hormone, steroids, which also cause breakouts, 
and other chemicals that they inject, dyes and everything else. So finding good clean sources of meat or vegetable sources of protein like beans, cheeses, certain things like that are going to be much less likely to have those growth hormones provided that they are hormone free and you have to look for that. Um, dark green and orange vegetables, the carotenoids and then the green vegetables. And then there are certain foods that contain an acid called osic acid, which includes almonds, beets, cashews, and chards, chard, um, Swiss chard, we call it. And those actually, those acids really can help reduce breakouts, bottom line. So eating those types of foods, which most of us like other than Swiss chard, it's kind of, oof. but if you can add vinegar and things to it. But generally those other types of things, we like almonds and beets and that type of stuff, really helps uh, with acne. A quarter cup of ground fax, flax seeds or at least 35 grams of fruit or vegetable fiber. If you don't have adequate amounts of fiber in the diet, you can't detox. You can't rid the bowel of the toxins and the longer your toxins stay in the bowel, the more they get reabsorbed back into the body and make you toxic all over again. Um, nuts and seeds like almonds and walnuts, uh, ones that you're not allergic to. Uh, good fats, what we call good fats in the diet, almonds, walnuts, pecans, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, avocados, they reduce inflammation and they can help also stabilize those hormones that we discussed earlier uh, to help reduce acne symptoms. Um, we talked about quality protein, making sure and doing your best to make it more vegetable sources of protein uh, or organic sources. Um, lots of water. So, you know, they tell you eight glasses a day. So that means an eight ounce glass of water about every two hours. And obviously you got to adjust that accordingly because if we do one uh, right before we go to bed, we're going to be up in the middle of the night. So you need more of your water in your earlier parts of your day, but a minimum of a glass of water every two hours. So carrying that water bottle along. Water cleanses the cells, it detoxes, it moves bowel along. It's one of the key detoxifying agents and so many people are drinking sodas and coffee and things like that, that they're not washing and cleaning out the cells. Um, active live bacteria yogurt. There's things like Daneva and other, most of those only contain just a few strains of bacteria but they can be helpful in building up some of that bacteria levels in the bowel that ha can help you fight off those staph infections with those little white breakouts. Foods to avoid, and, and this I kind of really want to focus on, especially among the kids and the sugarholics. You got to avoid junk and processed foods as much as you can if you have acne issues. I mean, this is junk. They're full of hydrogenated oils and fats. Uh, fats that literally are chemical, they don't break down, they're called trans fats and some actually governments and city governments have outlawed them. Um, sugar encourage, encourages oil production and bacteria yeast and remember how I told you how they actually literally tested the skin? There literally is something called skin diabetes which basically means you have these cells in your skin that hold a lot more sugar and much more sugar receptive and under those circumstances, guess what? Sugar feeds bacteria and yeast, so you're going to break out more. So getting yourself off of that sugar to change those cells and how they receive sugars is very, very important. Food allergies, particularly to dairy, wheat, corn, chocolate, those tend to be some of the worst offenders other than hydrogenated foods to contribute towards acne. So if you can avoid those for a while, uh, to see whether or not your body responds or reacts or eliminate them and maybe add one at a time and see if it, if it aggravates your acne. Very good option to choose. Obviously acne isn't just a physical thing, it affects people emotionally, especially kids. People make fun, uh, all those kinds of things. As an adult you can usually deal with it a little bit better. But kids are, are sensitive uh, to their peer pressure and peer group. And so it can really affect them very, very emotionally. So taking care of the physical symptoms of acne oftentimes helps heal with inside as well some of the emotional self-esteem issues. Um, artificial sugar and sugar substitutes, they're toxic. I'm sorry, they're, they are toxic. And the FDA and the government can say they're safe all they want, but they're chemicals and they cause certain reactions. And I see my customers in all the time that literally have actual chemical reactions to aspartame in particular and NutraSweet. You're talking about chlorine going into the body, chlorine ions, 
Chlorine ain't good for anybody, be it in a water source or be it in a food source. Ingesting it is just not good. So if you're going to use a sweetener using things like stevia, xylitol, um, uh, honey, honey's an alkali, raw honey, not purified and heated, but raw honey is an excellent sweetener and it's an alkali form. It has certain enzymes and bacteria that uh, the body likes and uh, will break down. Saturated and hydrogenated fats, we mentioned before, they're hormone disrupting, uh, they cause an imbalance in the fats, and they cause the liver to get kind of sluggish as well, so the liver can't detox all those toxins you're eating from all the junk food. We talk about pH and acid types of foods, so sugar is an acid food, red meats, most of the junk foods, the white flour, the bread you can smush into a ball. The skin has a pH to it, it's a balanced pH, and so whenever you use cleansers, you like them to say they're pH balanced. Well, dietary intake also, the body runs a pH of 7.35, and so you want to maintain that alkali pH in order to fight off bacteria and yeast. And when you eat very high acidic foods, and you can go online and you can punch in alkali diet, and it'll give you a list of alkali foods and acid foods. So you want to stick more with alkali producing foods and, and avoid those acid foods that tend to make the breakouts worse. Okay, I would also like to address potential detoxification. When you're talking about acne, oftentimes, like I mentioned before, it's because there's a lot of toxins in the body from all the chemicals, all the junk, lifestyle, pesticides, everything, pumping the gas, it's everywhere in our fabrics. Um, so I su strongly suggest, if you're able to do it, to do something called juice fasting. And I'm talking about vegetable juices, mostly. So things like your green juices, your spinach, your carrots, your beets, your celery. Doing some juicing for two or three days Give the digestion a rest, it helps flush the liver, it alkalizes the blood. If you have an opportunity to even just spend a weekend doing that for acne, for adult acne, as well as for child acne, can be very, very, very helpful. Um, I'd like to address some of the supplements that are out there. Foremost, diet, diet, diet is so vital and so important as far as acne is concerned. But there are supplements that can help heal and nutritionally wise that you can take in because you might be nutritionally deficient. First of all, probiotics, those good bacteria. Those good bacteria, 80% of our, our infections that develop in the body derive from the bowel. These good bacteria line the intestinal tract and they help you fight off infection. Without them, you can't fight off infection. So if you've been on your antibiotics for two months, because your doctor prescribed them for your acne, good luck, because when you go off of those, it's gonna come back with a vengeance, because you won't have any good bacteria to fight off the infection left. Remember, antibiotic means anti-life. Probiotic means pro-life. We get those good critters growing into the bowel. Very, very important to maintain uh, an for anti-infection. Vitex, and Vitex is a herb, it's also known as chaseberry, that can help hormone stabilize. And this works in males and females. Uh, I have a lot of perimenopause, premenopausal women that use Vitex because it's a hormone balancer. But it literally does help with, with male acne as well, too, and with puberty acne. Uh, Omega-369, those are the good fats. Remember those nuts I talked about, the almonds and walnuts and, and pecans and those? Those are omega 36 uh, particularly omega 3s and 6s, olive oils and omega 9. But the 3s and 6s help you uh, fight off the infection, help reduce inflammation, stabilize the hormones. So if you don't have adequate amounts of those in your diet, you can supplement them with pills such as flax oil, borage oil, those are available. Um, vitamin A. When someone comes in to me with a very bad, bad breakout, I'll put them on higher doses of vitamin A for a short period of time, slowly reducing, because vitamin A does store around the liver. Vitamin A kills staph infections. So many people don't eat vegetables, they're very vitamin A deficient. And so oftentimes supplementation in an A, in a good multivitamin,